Hello, welcome to Totally Random. So, uh, this is the electronics of a safe I bought quite some time ago. I uh, got a fairly heavily discounted rate on it due to the fact that uh, the business was moving. Uh, so anyway, I'll get on with it. So, it's a. I got too much glare. Okay, see so this top graph line over here. It's, it, yeah, I'm not going to burden myself with that or either anyone else. But after 15 minutes, it apparently can still withstand 800 degrees Celsius. Um, and after an hour, uh, temperature and furnace, as it states, it could be up to uh, surviving at 1,000 degrees. I'm yet to burn it. So, uh, yeah, let's get on with the uh, simple electronic bypass now. Everyone may have noticed the solenoid at the top, so effectively if you'd pick this, both the locks which I have, which is why the safe is in many pieces, you'd know that having the locks picked, this solenoid would still be blocking the actual locking mechanism, which is over here, so... that would be colliding with that there. However, everyone knows of the drop technique, so this is the backup battery compartment. Currently that's disconnected, the horn is on, there's power there and that line runs over to here which is the power for the board and the LCD screen. So I'll attempt to hypothetically electronically open the lock. Now I've set a uh, a code. Now the problem with this lock is it has a default code of 1234. So let's say the battery has died in this or alternatively using the 10 mil hole which is used for bolting the safe down you can get a flexi tool in there with a bit of an end on it that will collide with that because that's technically where it is inside the safe and this portion goes it's too hard to get in frame however the battery pack there is located there so it wouldn't be hard too hard to flick that open and pick the batteries out if you had some kind of specialty tool irrespective of that was the case as long as you can get to this red button and the panel on the front where the power supply goes in we can effectively if you were to be holding that button down Plug the secondary power supply in. And you're open. So, the trick for this... Is giving a new code. And that's all too easy to do. Especially when there's a hole in the bottom of the safe. Now, it's supposed to be a floor-mounted safe, however, say, I it's, uh, use this Rubik's Cube as an example. If this is the front of the safe where the electronics are mounted, that's where the hole is. It's 10 mil, and there's plenty of tools that'll fit in there that could get at the outer red button. So, essentially, the attack would be Someone comes along with four AAA batteries and a uh, plug connector, plugs it in, gets to the red button and uses the default codes to overwrite what you uh, had pre-programmed into the safe. So, <clears throat> yeah, beware. Of, also, the solenoid's another variable, which is a defeat mechanism in itself. However, it will keep the safe locked kind of, unless you drop it hard enough, which has been proven by um, several people. So, yeah, um, 
buyer beware when you're looking at uh, electronic safes. Totally random. Thanks for watching. Happy picking or playing with safes, casting keys, whatever you do, and keep it legal.